Welcome to Living in Color. I'm your host, Farah Nasser, and today we're going to be talking about racism within the fashion and advertising industries. You may have seen that noose sweater by Burberry, or perhaps the blackface shirt by Gucci, or maybe even the monkey by Prada. We're going to talk about the fashion industry and the direction it's headed in. And we have two experts in from the fashion industry. First, we have Britu Ahmed. You are a model and you're also an activist. And Sayed Sohel, who is a plus size model and you are also a fashion blogger. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank, Thank you for you having, having us. us. So you've heard some of the examples that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Is fashion tone deaf? I mean, do they have no idea what's going on? How do you feel when you see things like this? To me, it's just common sense, mm -hmm. but that's just because that's my reality, right? That's not necessarily somebody else's reality and they don't see it or they are not affected the way that I would be. And I think it's just a lack of education and mm -hmm. just diversity, honestly. I don't think it, it's anything malicious. Was there one piece of clothing that you saw that you thought, oh, really, are you kidding me? Well, definitely the uh, the Gucci turtleneck because you rolled it up to have the yeah. black face <laughs> lips, and I was like, that is obnoxious. Um, but another time, I I saw a campaign from Dolce Gabbana where they're using uh, like a Chinese model, um, and she was using chopsticks to eat pizza, and it was like super racist. And you you saw that there was real racism behind it. Uh, it wasn't necessarily just like, uh, oh, it was a mess up. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes you need to really see through what people are doing. Sometimes it's like the, the Burberry, uh, the noose. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. At first, I could understand they were trying to go for a nautical look, but, but it was still it ignorant. Was yeah, yeah, it was, it was not well thought yeah, out. Yeah, it was yeah. not right. well thought out. Yeah. Talk to me about why you think this is happening. Well, I honestly think these companies are just uneducated. They try to make these choices without having a diverse team on board. And because they don't have diversity within their own company, mm -hmm. their company culture just screams with racist undertones. Like, if you have a diverse team, you'll be able to say, oh, no. Somebody will say, red flag, yeah. red flag. Red flag, right, right, yeah. Right. But when you don't have that diversity in your team, you're going to be like, oh, this is fine. People like this. And they don't see it coming. Do you think it has anything to do with publicity, Britu? I personally don't necessarily think think that. Um, I think that it's just a lack of diversity within the the workplace. I feel like even me as a model, you know, I work with a bunch of companies um, and every time I see their creative staff or the people that are in charge, you know, they all kind of look the same and they don't look like me. So, you know, it is very frustrating. Um, I don't think it is malicious or in intentional. Um, I just think, like you said, it's just the lack of diversity within, yeah. What else do you think needs to be done so that we don't see, you know, a piece of clothing that makes the news because it's racist? I also think people of color like us, we should speak with our wallets. Yes. Instead of going to Gucci and supporting them, why not put that money into a brand that is representative of our communities? Do you get what I mean? I agree. A lot of people, even even though Gucci did that whole entire racist scandal, they're still going out and buying the branded monograms items. And I'm like, seriously, like, they don't really care about you. Did you hear what just happened? Yeah, right, right, yeah. Right, they don't right, really yeah. care about you. They don't really care about your money. Yeah. So why not support your own community and help build up a brand in your own community that will celebrate you? Exactly. Or a, an international brand that does celebrate yeah. you, yeah. you know, genuinely. There's another interesting angle when it comes to fashion and race, and that is cultural appropriation. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so let's, let's talk about, okay, well, get us started then. <laughs> so. Oh, my God. I think the most common example of that would be during runway shows, just pushing models down that are white and cornrows uh, with yes. Afrocentric centric hair. Um, Gucci did turbans on their runway. Did they really? They did. <laughs> they I think did. It, was, it was people who were Caucasian. It was recent. Turbans. I think it was wow. within the past year, too. Yeah, it was Sorry, Caucasians. people Caucasians wearing turbans. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> on the runway. Um, and it's just, it's like, it's 2019, guys. You should know better. Yeah. And, and even like with, you know, like he was saying that there are runway models that come down, you know, in cornrows, and they have like the baby hairs. And, and I'm just like, when a black girl does it, she's seen as ghetto or ratchet. Mm -hmm. But when a white model does it, it's seen as high fashion, even do-rags, you know, black males wear do-rags so that they can make sure that their hair is laid before they go to sleep. And, but they're seen as hoodlums when they have it outside in the streets, but then a model wears it on the runway and she's seen as high fashion. What about um, whitewashing models? Do you find that at all? Do you find that? Oh my gosh. Yeah? Yeah, that's actually even happened to me. Um, there was this one company that I worked with and I was really proud to work with them. Like I love their product and I was really excited for the photo shoot and the pictures to come out. And then I saw it on their website and I looked like a white woman and I was so confused and 
you know, I, I message my agency. And here's the thing. My agency is amazing. And I think I want to just quickly go back on that is that if you are going to be signed to an agency and you are seeking that, you need to make sure that they embrace you mm -hmm. um, and that they're always willing to have your back. Because if I didn't have that, I think I'd go crazy. Um, so I think that's very important. But yeah, I basically went, went back to them and I said, guys, like, what's going on? And they're just like, honestly, like, we're so sorry. Like, we'll try to get it fixed. And it was resolved, so I was happy about mm -hmm. it. But it's just the fact that that even had to happen. I was like, why? And I was white, white, white. I was unrecognizable. I didn't even know it was me until I looked closer. I was like, wait, that's that's me. That's crazy. I know. Is it common practice, though? Like, whitewashing in uh, yeah. happens all the campaigns? Time. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah, they, they try to make you look like you're multiracial so you can kind of work with Appeal every to any audience. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, when Karl Lagerfeld died recently, he was also criticized mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, you know, how people of color and how women were treated. So do you think that's justified? Like some people who may be really high up in the industry and, and how they treat it's, different models. It's actually funny that you say that. When he passed away, um, I actually had like a whole post on Instagram basically just kind of highlighting all the racist, homophobic, just like Islamophobic things that he said over his career. And a lot of celebrities, you know, they praised him when he died and they said he was an amazing, you know, fashion. And I'm just like, no. And mm -hmm. I don't think that that's excusable. It doesn't matter who you are, how much money you have. You have to be respectful of people. Especially when it's people who are setting examples in this industry to yeah. say things like that. It's a little bit damaging. Let's pick up on that point. What is it like to work, uh, work for a company or work with individuals who might not understand the intricacies of being a person of color? It's, it's very difficult. Um, I've worked with many companies and I feel like, like I said, because they are uneducated, to them, they don't understand it. Um, I've tried to speak up and I've, you know, I've, I've let certain companies know like, hey, you know, maybe if you did this or you had this in different shades, I think that you would allow people to feel like it's a more inclusive company. Um, sometimes people listen, sometimes they don't. Um, I've been told that as a model, you're a prop, you don't really have a say and just kind of keep your keep your head down and just kind of do what you're asked to do. So. You've been told by companies, though, that they don't work with people with darker skin tones. You've yes. been said that out, people have said that outright to you, have texted yeah. you that outright. To, give me an example. Yeah. Tell me about that. Another situation happened with my hair. Um, they didn't take the time to try to find someone that could actually work with my hair, and I have a lot of hair, um, and they just didn't understand the texture. And so they kind of put me to the side, and they didn't listen to what I was saying to them, but then there would be a white model and if she had something that she wasn't happy with and she, you know, voiced her opinion, she was taken seriously. As opposed to me, I wasn't taken seriously. And yeah, that I happens a lot with. within the industry. Yeah. It's like people of color, they often don't get those management roles. So we don't have anyone that we could talk to and be like, hey guys, this is an issue. Yeah. But if you're not of color and you're white, then you could voice your opinion and then they'll be able to take yeah. it. But when we do it, they're kind of like, oh, we don't really care what you think. And it's kind of seen as confrontational. Like if yeah. I mm. speak up my mind and I say what I'm thinking, no, you know what, just you're going to be too difficult. Just leave it alone. Let them do you're it. You're seen as a troublemaker. Yeah, yeah, I'm seen as a troublemaker. And so, you know, I, I just kind of now keep my, sometimes I keep myself and I don't really say anything yeah, to them. That's Which is sad, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, you know, it, it shouldn't is, be yeah. like that. When I am doing campaigns as a blogger, um, these companies, they don't really care what I have to say, and I will voice my opinion, and I'm labeled obnoxious, difficult, oh, he's a diva, but I don't really care. I'm, I, I want to make a, a, a positive impact for other people that are going to come up after me because I was one of the first people to do it in Canada. Um, so for me, I don't really care what companies say back to me. Um, if they don't want to work with me after that, I, whatever. Do you think that being a person of color is a plus? Do you think it's a minus? Do you think it just doesn't matter when, when it comes to being represented by certain agencies? I think that nowadays um, a lot more companies are a lot more open to having people of color, which to me is a sad statement to, to say anyways. I think that everybody should be chosen, you know, it shouldn't depend on your skin tone or your color. Um, but I do find that sometimes I am hired because of the fact that I feel like a token, kind of. Mm -hmm. I am a woman of color, you know, I'm a black woman, and I'm also plus size. So she checks off two boxes, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we're inclusives. And then there are other companies that I genuinely do think that they do want their clients and their customers to feel like it is a very inclusive company. Uh, but then a lot of the times I do feel like I am a token model. So it kind of, it, it does work to my benefit at times. But then I'm not considered for a bunch of other jobs that, you know, maybe some other of my... Uh, Model colleagues, colleagues yeah. would be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With blogging, it's a little bit different. Uh, for my experience, I used 
the fact that I was a plus size brown man mm -hmm. to differentiate myself from millions of <laughs> the standard model <laughs> white guys. Um, and I used that to my advantage because I was like, let me build an audience mm -hmm. and have people relate to me that look like me uh, online and build a community around it. So my agency that represents me, they were like, you know what, this is a perfect person to pick up because his audience really relates to him. All right, guys, thanks so much for your insight you. as insiders yeah. in the fashion industry. Appreciate it. We've learned a lot. Thank you for watching Living in Color. Thank you for watching Living in Color. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have an idea for a future Living in Color episode, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Please leave them in the comment section.